In this video, I'm going to talk about the different types of logistics drawings on your project. And I hope you're going to enjoy this because a lot of times people will just make a site utilization plan or a logistics drawing and put it up on the wall and it'll become static and we don't use it again and nobody really like values it very much, but that's not how it should be. Logistics is a jam and I'm gonna take you through how I visualize it right now. So before we begin, <clears throat> I want to tell you a story. This is the experience of most workers on site. They know that they are going to come to a project, so they're driving, GPSing on their car to the project site. They're like, oh, where's the parking lot? Oh, let me circle around. Oh, I took the wrong turn. Oh, okay, I got to get back over here. I think it's over here. Oh, okay, here's the entrance to the parking lot, okay? They've had coffee that morning and I'm not attempting to be vulgar. And they're like, okay, I've got to go to the restroom, either, uh, either one or two, I'm not being vulgar. And they get to the parking lot and they're like, oh my gosh, uh, where, like, where am I gonna to go to the restroom? I don't see a porta potty, there's nothing here. And oh my gosh, the sign says that the job site's like a mile away. So they're like at this point thinking to themselves, I'm either gonna pee in a cup or pee like next to my car, or I'm gonna go number two somewhere and use my sock. Like, and you think I'm being vulgar, I'm not. I'm being dead serious. Like this is the experience of workers. Not only are they frustrated because they couldn't find the site, but now they're delayed. Now they get to the parking lot. Now there's no bathroom. Now they're in an emergency and they've got all these tools to carry. So imagine somehow they've got this figured out. They walk down to the project site. They're attempting to find the actual project, right? Where it goes. Oh, this isn't the entrance. Oh my gosh, I gotta go over. Okay, where's the entrance? I asked somebody. Somebody over here who sounds clinic clinically depressed generally points. Okay, they finally get into the site. Now they're like, where am I going? They put their tools down, finally get to the bat bathroom. They may or may not have to use their sock because the bathrooms may be nasty and most of the time they won't have toilet paper, right? So now the worker's like really frazzled, feeling dirty and gross, uh, comes over and is like, okay, where am I supposed to be? Comes into the trailer, somebody who's really grumpy, who sounds like that boss in Monsters Incorporated, who's always talking about like, welcome to the job site, right? Says, okay, here we go, go sit into a conference room and you sit here by yourself and you're like, oh my gosh, like, where is everybody? I need to get out to work. My foreman's texting me, right? Then somebody, another clinically depressed person, comes in and is like, here, let me watch a video. Let me turn on the video for you. And then here, let me give you your, your sticker. Go find your crew. Now, the, the person, the worker, grabs his or her tools and attempts to find where the crew is. Where are they? They're on a treasure hunt. Finally, they get to the project, uh, the crew on the project, and they finally find where they're going. And after having a hard time finding the site, getting lost, not having a place to go to the restroom, having to walk, no place to smoke, getting lost, getting ignored, uh, then finally getting to a nasty bathroom where they're not welcomed, getting thrown into an office, thrown a project engineer to give the orientation and a sticker, and then going on a treasure hunt on site in horrible, confusing conditions. Now, they're really happy and want to do a good job for you. No, that's not how life works. Now, they're pissed off. Now they're gonna pee in bottles. Now they're gonna graffiti on the bathrooms. Now they're going to cause trouble. Now they're gonna stop caring about the quality of work. Now you don't have one team. This is the typical experience that we have on construction sites, and we've got to do better. If you want to really win over your craft and have them have a great experience, have clear directions to the project site, okay, this is where we go, have a place for them to go to the restroom, an easy way for them to find the entryway to the site. When they get there, have really good clean bathrooms so that they can land, right? Then when they get into the office trailer, somebody says, welcome, we're so happy that you're here. Would you like a water? then go do a really comprehensive energetic orientation and then have somebody walk them out to their crew. Then they will actually be happy 
and will now want to take care of your bathrooms, will now want to install a quality product, and will now want to be a part of your team. So this is key to start. The reason I mentioned that about the worker's experience is because there's two key types of logistics plans or two key uh, items or concepts that I want on these logistics plans that are crucial. So the first type of drawing or concept that will go into one drawing, depending on if you have space, is called your wayfinding plan, okay? So the key is to get your workers to the place of work as fast as you can. So again, if you have your job site and then this offsite parking down here, what you need to do in this logistics drawing, this first one, is to understand what kind of signage is going to get people to the parking lot, what kind of signage is going to get them to the job site? What kind of signs would they need to see, right? What kind of signage will get them into the trailer to the orientation and then around the project? So that's the key. How do I get workers to where they're going as fast as possible? And I always recommend having signs like airports. Uh, could you imagine if airports looked like our construction projects, nobody would know where the gates are, where they're going, what's going on, when things are happening, it would be utter chaos. So do I need signs saying, you know, this is where we go? Do I need signs that say, this is where you enter the job site? Do I need signs that say PPE required? Do I need a sign that says, hey, worker orientation's here? Do I need signage here on the job site showing people where to go? So your first one that you'll start to coordinate is any signage. So I'll put wayfinding signage for the project site so that workers can get to where they're going successfully okay the second one and this can be its own separate drawing or it can be a concept that is looped into to your single drawing but if you have your project site right I want to know all of your safety items right if this is your trailer down here where is, and I'll mark it in a different color marker, where is your, uh, your basket, your rescue basket for the crane? Where is your AED? Where is ice and water? Where are your fire extinguishers going to be placed throughout the job site? Where is your muster point or your emergency gathering area, right? Where are all of your exits for the project in case something happened? Where are your fire access lanes so that your fire department can come do a rescue? I need to know all of the key safety requirements on the project. So typically uh, this will be, so the wayfinding signage will be designed separately, safety separately, or you could put them all in one drawing, but these are uh, the first two that you'll have on your project. And the other four logistics drawings will be based on your timeline. So when I think about your project, this is substantial completion and this is start, you will have a mobilization phase a, you know, like structure, foundations, foundations and superstructure phase. You'll have your phase where you have your interiors and your exterior, and then you'll have your closeout and site work. So uh, the, I know there's more phases for most projects, but I'm going to want to see as your third uh, logistics plan, what will your logistics plan look like when you're in the mobilization phase? So I'll give you an example. On one project, I remember here were the two existing buildings and we were able to only take over a portion of the parking lot uh, so that all of the cars could start to exit, right? And we were mobilizing and taking over half of the site to begin with. In this part of the logistics planning, you've, you're, you're establishing your uh, traffic control, your site fencing, your access and egress, your phasing of existing occupants out or uh, existing motorists in a parking lot out and away. Uh, you are establishing all of your SWIP, uh, you're making sure that your dust is under control, any screening, any signage, right? Any enclosures on the project and you're starting your excavation. So this is like very, very specific to the mobilization phase of your project. The fourth logistics drawing that I would recommend is uh, your uh, foundations. So I'll just do FND uh, and structure. So I'll just do STR. In this one, 
Um, like some key things that you might have are your, you know, your your pump locations, your slick lines, your uh, wall racks for your your concrete structure, or if it's a steel structure, your steel staging. But the bottom line is you'll have items in here for your building that are very specific to the structural phase. So not only in the projects that I've built in the past did I have a specific type of logistics to build the basement, but also for the structure, we had, like I said, things like wall racks and specific staging, pump locations, how the pump was gonna reach the upper floors, possible slick lines up through the building. There's very specific logistics when it comes to your foundations and structure. Now. Your fifth one is your uh, interior and exterior construction. So what I mean by that is, if let's say that you have a building and on this very same building that I'm talking about, there were two wings and we were working the exterior around, but we also needed access into the interiors, right? So the exterior logistics looks very specific and the interior staging looked very specific for how we were going to get past it and into the building. So when you look at your interior plus exterior, you're going to have things like, hey, what's your exterior staging? What's your exterior sequence? Where are you gonna lay materials down? How are you gonna get access to the outside of the building? How can workers get in and out of the building knowing that you're building the outside? How are you going to mobilize with a hoist or a crane or leave out areas? How are you going to scrap out, right? All of these considerations are key in this interior and exterior phase and it looks completely different from these others. Now, the final one, which I really like, is uh, you are doing punch list in the building, right? So I'm gonna draw this same thing. Uh, but you're also starting to wrap the site around, and as you finish the site, you have the same problem with access. So the sixth one that I want to encourage you, this one is site plus commissioning, right? And the reason I like this is because, uh, yes, you're gonna start shutting down areas, you're gonna finish the exterior, you're gonna punch the exterior, you're gonna start doing underground uh, planting trees, doing irrigation, power, hardscape, landscape, but you also have to understand what areas need to be phased so that your access and egress for your finished building as you're finishing the building can transition from the site that's not developed onto permanent walkways where your site is being constructed. So now you know, hey, what areas can I start on in what sequence and how can I maintain the access and egress to the site? So this will look much different than even the interiors and exteriors. So this is logistics plan number three, four, five, and six, in addition to what I already told you, which was the signage uh, plus your safety planning. Now. Um, you could possibly put your wayfinding signage and safety into each one of these, and I think I would be fine with that. The key is don't let the work overpower these two, because I would say these are like, safety is definitely always, and it's a priority and it's a value and it's more important, right? So you can't ever let this be overshadowed by the work. Uh, but I am fine for you to loop them in, but at a minimum, your different phases on the different project, on the, on the project, sorry, will have to be broken out because they'll be very different. Now, as I close out, I wanna say that uh, the work here is on these logistics uh, drawings is specifically so that you can coordinate where things go and how to get materials on site. It's specifically so you can coordinate the crane, the hoist, and the forklift. And it's specifically so that you can schedule deliveries and get them to the right place. So every day, your crane operator, your forklift operator, and your hoist operator better have a current copy of this showing where materials go or else they'll end up in the wrong place. So a logistics plan is updated weekly at least, daily probably at best, and it will show when and where things are being staged, how they're going to be staged through those access points, right, the crane, forklift, and hoist, and they will be used to make sure that things come at the right time and end up where they're supposed to go. So you can't do that if you have one drawing that's old and not updated. You've got to have current drawings that have all the right relevant information in an active system that you use daily that foreman can see and that your crane operator, forklift operator, hoist operator can follow. So these are actual drawings that are used on the site. They're not passive, old, out of date, and up on the wall. So 
If you need help with these, we have templates. All you have to do is reach out to us. We have Blue Beam templates, Blue Beam toolboxes, great checklists for your logistics planning. And we also create these for clients all the time. So if you need our help, let us know. At the end of the day, logistics, logistics, logistics are the, this is the most important consideration. Remember that quote that amateur study tactics, armchair general study strategy, but real general study logistics. And you will too if you want to run a remarkable project. I hope you've enjoyed this video. On we go.